Hello, my name is Jorb, and I love gear. Today, we're talking about the sequential circuits slash Tom Oberheim OB6. If you aren't familiar, the OB6 came out in 2016, I believe, it was shown first at the NAMM show in January of 2016. And it is a collaboration between, I think, Dave Smith Instruments at the time, but later sequential and Tom Oberheim. It's a very similar platform to the Prophet 6 that came out a year or two earlier, but with a filter based on the original SEM filter, the Synth Expander module, and some other differences to give it more of that Oberheim flavor. This video is not scripted or planned or even outlined. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit down and try and step through all my thoughts in a somewhat logical way uh, after the brief time I've had with the OB6. So I'm only having it for a short amount of time because I'm borrowing it. I'm borrowing it from a good friend and local musician, Avery Moss. Avery, thank you. They're a great musician. They recently put out a single called Heading Home Again with Jim Swim, another local musician. I really think it's great. There's some synth riffs. I'll link to it below. You guys should check it out. But we did a little short-term swap. They're borrowing my SH-101 and I'm borrowing their OB6. So I'm going to try and squeak out this one video <laughs> while I've got it. Uh, also, the timing of this is kind of special. There's a good chance that this will be the last time I can have an impression of this, an opinion of this, without comparing it to whatever Oberheim comes out next. This is the 9th of May. Yes, Superbooth is in, I think, two days. I leave tomorrow to get there. Subscribe if you want <laughs> coverage. But the rumor mill, and there's an event on the calendar that makes it seem like there's going to be a new something from Oberheim. So I'd like to get my thoughts on this out and compiled before everybody says, can you compare it to the this? Can you compare it to the this? So I'm, I'm happy to have had it. I'm happy to have had it when I did, even if it was for just a short amount of time. But to step through my impressions of it, you guys know what's important to me. The first thing I'm going to talk about is price. Between $2,500 and $3,000 is a lot to pay for a single keyboard. And I know that might sound a little rich from somebody who, <laughs> you know, uses a couple electric pianos, basically a set dressing. <laughs> but those were bought broken and I fixed them up. Nothing in this room, let me really think about this before I say it, nothing in this room cost me more than $1,500 to purchase outright. I think the closest I might get is with my Live 2. I think I paid $1,100 for my Live 2. But to do more than twice that for a good condition used OB6, it's not unreasonable at all for me to sell, say, my Juno and my D50 if I feel that the OB6 would be a perfect fit for me. And this is in part a way for you to reframe the thinking for yourself. It might seem unreasonably expensive, but there's a chance you could sell a few other things and get close. If I got totally out of your rack, for example, or if I sold one of my electric pianos with the with the idea that a lot of that money would be going to buying something this expensive, it, it helps, okay? And <laughs> And I also want to get that out of the way because I don't want to talk about price the whole time. It's hard for me not to, but it, it undermines a lot of the conversation, I think, that can be had about the design of an instrument, the design of a synthesizer. And I do want to talk about this in and of itself as a product that exists, right? As a collection of design ideas, as a complete functional instrument, and try and get away from it does this for this much money or it has this many features for this price tag. I don't really want to do that the whole time. So first, so to summarize the price... It is very expensive, so much so that I almost would not consider ever getting one. It's a little better when you look at the desktop. I'm not sure, but I'll put up uh, a few used listings on Reverb just to show you what they're at right now. I think around two grand, and that is certainly more believable, especially, again, if I sell a few other things. Yes, it's a lot of money, but if it's a perfect fit for you and what you're trying to do, it's not unreasonable for it to replace two other pieces of gear that might add up or get pretty close to it. So I digress. I'm going to try and not talk about price anymore. On to a question that tons and tons of people ask, tons and tons of videos mention. Should you get this or the Prophet 6? Or if you know you want one very nice bread and butter poly synth, should you get this or the Prophet 6? And it feels diminutive. There are layout differences. The modulation being all the way on the left panel is so this is, you know, it's almost like a nod, a reference to old Oberheim synths. And the layout of the Prophet 6 is, of course, like the Prophet 5. But Essentially, the modules are the same. The big difference is in the filter. There is a bit of a difference in the oscillators between the Prophet 6 and the OB6. One of them on the OB6 goes from saw straight to square, and the other one goes from triangle to saw to square. And I believe on the Prophet 6, they both go triangle, saw, square. If I'm wrong about that, I'll cut it out. <laughs> I'm not actually sure uh, if that is in reference to another Oberheim synth, just going straight between saw and square. When I think of the Oberheim polysynths, the X, the 8, the XA, they had 
simultaneous waveform switches and not any continuous morphing. So if that is, uh, you know, in acknowledgement of that, interesting. But regardless, that is another small difference to the, uh, between the OB6 and the Prophet 6. And I believe there's modulation destinations that are different. On the OB6, you can modulate the pulse width of oscillator one or oscillator two or both. And I'm pretty sure on the Prophet 6, when you modulate pulse width, you do it for both. Oh, and the um, sub oscillator is a triangle on the Prophet 6 and a square on the OB6. That's another thing. I don't know if that's in reference to any Oberheim synthesizers. I, I, can't, I don't think any of them had sub oscillators. And I'll cut this out again if I'm wrong. <laughs> but uh, those are the small ones, okay? I just want to mention those. The big, big differences in the filter. The OB6 has one multi-mode filter that morphs between low pass, notch, and high pass with a button for band pass, as opposed to the Prophet 6, which has separate high pass and low pass, which is a very, very big difference. You can get some similar tones if you separate the cutoffs a little bit and modulate them together on the Prophet 6, but the OB6 being able to modulate the filter mode or being able to turn it just a little bit off of low pass so you get some of that extra high end from the notch is, is very unique and very interesting. And in a lot of ways defines the character of this synth. And if you're thinking about one or the other, I, I don't think anybody's gonna say, I need my sub oscillator to be a triangle. I don't think anybody's gonna say, I need to modulate pulse width just of oscillator two. I, I just find that kind of hard to believe, but I can understand somebody saying, I need to have a state variable filter. I love the sound of a continuous uh, mode change of my filter. I really like the sound of a two pole filter, if I didn't mention that. The OB6 filter is two poles, 12 dB per octave, as opposed to 24 dB per octave or four pole on the Prophet 6. That is a more gradual slope rolling off the high end uh, above the cutoff point. And totally to overgeneralize, the OB6 is going to be more present and less driven than the Prophet 6. Also, the filter isn't self-resonant on the OB6. It is on the Prophet 6. So if you're thinking about one or the other, think about the filters. Think about what you can do with separate high pass and low pass, each resonant on the Prophet 6. Think about what you can do with a continuous filter mode. You should really, really focus on that. You should really, really fixate on that. And I know that makes the decision even harder. <laughs> You know what I mean? In, in some way, it's divorced from features. It is the sound. It is the feel. Uh, it, it's a matter of taste in some ways between the Prophet 6 and the OB6. That, to me, makes the decision much, much harder. No matter what, they're both going to be dope, and they're both going to be flexible, and they'll both do a lot of cool things, but your decision really should be based around the capabilities of one filter or the other. To talk pretty generally about layout and user experience, uh, when we talk about hardware sense, we throw around knob per function a lot. Essentially, everything you can do is accessed through the panel, and there isn't another way. Almost everything that synth, this synth can do can be understood from looking at the panel and reading the labels above the buttons. You know, when I press global one or global two, I can change those things right there. That is amazing. To not have to really go through a menu to change things like your sustain pedal polarity, that is an oppressive amount of control afforded to the front panel of a synthesizer. It is fun and intuitive to sit and use the synthesizer 100% seriously. And fit and finish is very, very good. It looks good, it feels good, the keybed feels great. Aftertouch, velocity, well-tuned, and you have a few different um, sensitivities to choose between those. All that is excellent. It's almost worth not mentioning <laughs> because at this price point from a company like Sequential, it's going to be very, very nice. That alone is certainly worth a big chunk of the price point. It has two built-in effects, which Actually, it's, it's pretty much the same opinion I had of the Take 5. The reverbs and delays sound good. If you dial it in carefully, the flanger and the chorus can sound pretty good. I don't love the phasers. I don't love the ring mod. I don't love the speaker simulator. And only having the two parameters makes it kind of difficult to dial things in. Plus, I haven't had enough time with it to remember which parameter is going to be which. You know what I mean? Which one's rate, which one's depth when I turn on the chorus. So the effects section is nice to have. It makes it possible for this to be brought on stage by itself but to me doesn't really add enough to be a separate selling point. Nice to have, but shouldn't sell it for you. The sequencer and the arpeggiator, great, not much to say. Okay, limitations. <laughs> the way modulation works, each source has a single amount 
and there's three buses. One bus for just aftertouch, one bus that shares the filter envelope and VCO2, and one bus that's just for the LFO. And so you have an LFO amount that is shared between the pitch of each oscillator, the filter frequency, uh, the pulse width modulation. All of those have to share the same amount. And same thing with the cross mod section, that's your filter envelope and your VCO2. And almost worse with the middle bus, if you're sending the filter envelope somewhere, you're also sending VCO2 to it. So if you're just using VCO2 as a polyphonic LFO to move around your pulse width, for example, but you also want to use the filter envelope on, I don't know, the pitch of oscillator one, you can't do that. Those are always going to be joined. And is a restriction that doesn't totally make sense with the Oberheim thing. I, I believe on Oberheim stuff, at least the XA, which is the panel I remember the, the most vividly, you can send a different LFO amount to your pulse width than you can your oscillator one pitch, for example. And so having that weird, really from the Prophet 5 restriction on this, I don't really get. And if it's part of the like design lineage of the Prophet 5, then cool. But also, why not just make all of those buttons a knob instead? Does that undermine the creative principle of it? I don't think so. But does it change the core of how it works and what you're going to make with it? Yeah, it really, really does. And speaking now, really, of the Prophet 6, maybe they tried it and they didn't work, or... Maybe they thought that it brought it into such a new space that it didn't feel like it was doing that thing anymore. I'm not sure. It's, I imagine it's something that would have come up. But as far as why does it come into the OB6, that to me feels like an efficient, resourceful product design move. And I don't fault anybody for that. <laughs> Making hardware is f***ing hard and f***ing expensive. So I'm not mad that that carried over to the OB6, but I just wonder why. You know what I mean? And still kind of thinking about limitations why can't the mod wheel go to anything other than the LFO amount? It can't even be the amount of one of the other buses. I can't bring in more modulation from VCO2, for example. And I don't really get that. At a bare minimum, can we use the aftertouch bus also for the mod wheel? Because then we could use the mod wheel to just change filter frequency or the filter mode or our volume or the pitch of a single oscillator. I don't even think, as far as a firmware update, that would be that hard. Then you have to think of a button combo, I guess, to implement it, but like, can we hold manual and press wheel range? And then the mod wheel works for the aftertouch bus? I don't know if that's a good idea or possible or not, but that seems just like a little weird missed opportunity. And I don't feel like it sacrifices any artistic vision of the keyboard. Sure, yes, there's a filter frequency input on the back, so you could do it with a pedal or, you know, an expression roller or whatever. But to tie that back to two things I said, really, is somebody making their decision based on if you can put the mod wheel to the filter frequency? Probably not. It's something I'm used to and would like to be able to do on this, but that you know shouldn't stop somebody from wanting to buy one. Or since the synthesizer is so hands-on, so knob per function, I can just reach the hand that would be on the mod wheel up to the filter knob. Let me try and summarize that, because I talked a lot. <laughs> I'll probably cut out half of it. Some of the limitations yes, people are going to bring up modulation, feel kind of weird, feel kind of pointless. But that's not to say the synth is limited, and there are huge benefits to routing your modulation like this. As opposed to having to scroll through a modulation matrix with every possible connection, this is the stuff you're probably going to want to run it to 80-90% of the time. And you can just quickly say, hey, you know what, what if I put that LFO on pulse width instead of the filter? What if I put, you know, the filter envelope on pitch instead of the shape of the waveform or whatever. To just quickly try those things, that's a very, very engaging way to sit and try and design sounds. And a synth doesn't need to be able to modulate everything all the time to sound good or to have good sounds in it. Not at all, especially something that's so clearly trying to get you to feel like, you know, it's the sound and the feel of, you know, whatever, 1979. The sort of sounds that a lot of people are gonna try and get out of it are in there, and they sound super, super good. Everything I said up to now was sort of middling, so let me be super definitive. The OB6 sounds great. The OB6 feels great. <laughs> Programming the OB6 is very hands-on, is very immediate, is very, very fun. Those are all things that are very, very important to me in sitting and working with a hardware synth, or choosing a hardware synth. And another thing that's very easy to be definitive about, I want to spend more time with it. I want to keep making sounds with it. I really want to see how much I can ignore those limitations. I want to see how far I can push it. 
And whatever combination of things that is, that to me is a very, very good sign. But the last thing I'm going to leave you guys with is something that Avery said. Avery is the owner of the synthesizer, and they're planning on selling it soon. And they said, it's a perfect synth for somebody else. And in some ways, I think I agree with that. I am the sort of a person who likes to tweak. I really like setting up subtle modulations over here, but bold ones over here. I rely a lot on modulating effects for a lot of the sounds I use in live performance. And that's just not quite here. But for classic bread and butter analog polysynth sounds, this is superb. <laughs> this is so, so good. There you go. The DSi slash Tom Oberheim OB6 to somebody, the perfect synth. <laughs> My name is Jorb. I love gear. Thanks for watching. When this video drops, I will be somewhere in the air between the United States and Germany. <laughs> so subscribe or stick around or watch the next few days for super booth coverage. Thanks for watching. My name's Jorb. I love gear. Hope to see you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.